So you're asking for too much information. Uh, you're putting the CEO on pressure to give you 10, 20 things that you don't really need and not allowing the CEO to actually focus on the things that they need to focus on so that information, there's almost information overload. One of the key functions of the board of directors of a company is to supervise the company's management, whose management is led by the company's chief executive officer. In this session, Rita Kabatunzi guides us through the different stages of the evolution of the board of directors of any company, showing that with each stage, the board's relationship with the chief executive officer changes. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. I'll use a book which I know you know very well and, and, and which I like to refer to. That's Ram Charan's uh, book on boards that deliver. Um, what I like about that book is that it looks at the board as one other resource for competitive advantage. So, you know, it, it, it's actually built on the theme of from compliance to competitive advantage. And um, in that book, Ram Charan talks about three main stages of evolution. One is uh, in, in the initial, you are ceremonial board. Uh, another, the next stage is a liberated board. And the third is a progressive board. And there's three key parameters that Ram Charan measures, right? So one is, is, is um, the dynamics, the board dynamics in, for any board. What are the board dynamics? The second is what's the information architecture. Is, is, is what he refers that he refers to and the third is how are you actually structured okay how are you actually structured so it, those three are, are, are the stages that he uses so do you focus on the substantive issues that you need to focus on so if you take those three into account he says for every board you can tell which stage it is at based on these three aspects so the first one is a ceremonial board that's a board which we know very well in Uganda, especially for smaller businesses. That's the one where it's rubber stamping. The CEO really runs the show. There's a board, but it's, it's ceremonial, as the word suggests. Um, you know, information is purely on, you know, at the discretion of the CEO. The CEO sends it through if he wants to send it through. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't, or she doesn't uh, send it through. Uh, and then there's no, there are no agenda items except for compliance. We need a resolution to open a bank account. We need a resolution to appoint this. We need, you know, it's all compliance. You know, that's a ceremonial board. Not uncommon, by the way, not uncommon. Um, and not necessarily just in small businesses. It could be even in, in larger businesses. Um, then there is the liberated board. As the word suggests, liberated is you get excited about the fact that you have leeway as the board. You're independent. You can make decisions. You can ask questions. But then the liberated board, as we all know, freedom and liberty can sometimes tend to sway to the other side. So according to Ram Sharan, that the challenge with this liberated board is that there may be a bit too much uh, happy-go-lucky. Now you're so excited, there are no guardrails. So you're asking for too much information. Uh, you're putting the CEO on pressure to give you 10, 20 things that you don't really need and not allowing the CEO to actually focus on the things that they need to focus on so that information, there's almost information overload. There is a willingness, yes, to participate. You have the independent directors, but it's disjointed. Uh, there isn't a proper gelling, and, and, and there's a lot of box ticking still. Um, you, you may have the charters and all that, but there's still a lot of box ticking. And you have some level of agenda items that are more than the compliance ones. Uh, you're not just focused on compliance, but you still tend to skew towards um, things that you as the board feel are important, not necessarily value adding uh, items uh, on the board. So the focus on substantive issues is also still quite lacking, but you've moved somewhat in that you have some processes and systems. I know that we are very big, governance professionals are big on processes and systems. So this is the place where you, you get excited that, oh, we have charters in place, the board meets this number of times, there is an evaluation, all those aspects, there's an inter internal audit um, function, there's external audit, independent, but the value add that's coming from having these things in place and um, the discipline to focus on the key things is still not there. So where there's challenge to the CEO, it might be over the top and distracting, uh, not really focusing on the right things. And so there's a board dynamic that doesn't quite work. The progressive board 
is uh, where Ram Sharan says we should all look to, to, to move to. So the Progressive Board is it's a team and it's a, a team that is gelled. I have to say, I think sometimes we forget that the board is a team like every other team. It, 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 the team dynamics are the same. You know, there's, there's, it should be diverse, but that diversity should be something that helps with cohesion. It shouldn't be that the diversity causes uh, different players to go into different directions. So with a progressive board, there is that gelling. The gelling is the understanding of the team goals. What are we here to do? You know, how do we help management fulfill its purpose? And because of that, the board and, and management buys into that as well, by the way. So because of that, the usual challenges like the things we've just talked about, collaborating and flow of information, are not a challenge because everyone is bought on to this greater uh, vision and purpose. So that type of board is going to focus their agenda on forward-looking matters. It's not that the, the, the past-looking matters are not important. They are, but there should be a focus more on where are we taking this company. Um, that board is going to take board evaluation very seriously. So whatever the issues that come out of this board evaluation are, there's going to be a focus on tracking them, seeing how we are improving, are we doing well enough. That board allows the CEO to operate the management. The non-interference non is not an issue because the CEO is trusted. There's a lot of trust at this level. The CEO is trusted to do the right thing and to report when they need to report. There's an escalation. If there's an issue, if there's a crisis, the CEO is trusted to let the board know there is a crisis. Um, so management gets, gives information, it's timely, it's focused, it allows the board to make the right decisions and the board in turn is well equipped to actually unpack this information and focus on the key issues, which again, as we say, are value adding, they're forward looking, they're not, uh, you know, ticking the box and, you know, needing to, to focus on things that do not add the value where it should be. So that's, those are the three stages. And, and, and you know, a lot of has been said around Uganda, in Uganda, it's largely the last two, the, 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 the previous stages, yeah.